At last, Sam Fisher is defending the free world from terrorists. It's a stunning change of pace for the man more commonly associated with sitting back in an armchair and eating an egg salad sandwich, but this time he's strapping on his green goggles and taking down the engineers, a shadowy organisation trying to undermine America's values. Armed with his wits, his gadgets, and a partner whose name should be Call of Duty on legs, Fisher heads out to take a bite out of terror and, yeah, Sam fights terrorists. After the genuinely intriguing plot of Splinter Cell Conviction, Blacklist's plot is rather pedestrian and not all that intriguing at all. Still, the main villain is good. Shame he's not in it much. Blacklist attempts to marry the traditional Splinter Cell experience with ideas introduced in Conviction, and as you might expect, the result is a game that struggles to be quite as good as either the gameplay models it lifts from. You have the option to tackle missions using ghostly stealth, predatory stalking, or rule out action, but this freedom comes off more like confusion. The game tries to force sneaking elements before later forcing in action, including aerial bombing missions and first person shooter segments. Nevertheless, amidst the conflicting design is a game that does manage to be quite satisfying in a number of ways, especially when you go the ghost route and manage to shift your way past a gaggle of guards totally undetected. The level design is really quite good this time around, with plenty of ceilings to shuffle across, windows to sneak under, and multiple routes to suit your playstyle, while fun gadgets include a remote controlled drone, a bow that launches sleep arrows, and of course, sticky cameras. Sam's weapons, outfit and gadgets can all be upgraded, while optional objectives, replayable non-story missions and passive challenges all led to the payout. The campaign is a fairly standard, inoffensive romp through the world, but co-op is surprisingly fun and adds an extra element of challenge to the sneaking action. The Spy vs Merc multiplayer mode also returns and maintains its position as an unlikely series highlight, as sneaky spies take out first person shooting mercenaries in a series of online modes. It may displease some to hear that multiplayer is what makes Blacklist, but it's true. Without Spy vs Mercs, the campaign alone is a bit of a letdown. It's the online that proves itself to be the winner, and that's just the way it is. Blacklist doesn't look all that good, with muddy textures and screen tearing on an installed PS3 version. You also need to mess with your PS3 settings to stop the thing looking way too dark. Add to that some damn lengthy loading times, and you've got a game that's not as well presented as it could be, which is a shame because the Splinter Cell aesthetic design is still as charmingly clancy as ever. Sound-wise, the voice acting is okay, with again the bad guy Sadiq proving to steal the show. The music is your usual collection of duns and boom booms and duns, and that's okay if you like that sort of thing. Builds the mood at any rate. Splinter Cell Blacklist is pretty good if you go into it aiming to play everything it has to offer. There's a good deal of content and the multiplayer is terrific fun, but with a campaign that's just kind of there, and the not altogether successful compromise between conflicting gameplay styles, you may want to try this sucker before plonking down the full wad of cash.